أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أم دكتور بروفيسور خان شاكيل أحمد هيد أوف ذا ديبارتمنت أوف فورنسيك ميديسين أت ديناكيز ميديكال كوليس كولا. Dear students, previously we discussed about introduction of forensic medicine. Today, we would like to discuss about medical ethics, inshallah. And the topics medical ethics is very much important for written, oral and practical examination as well as our daily medical life. That is, whenever you go to the ward for your training, your ward placement, during your ward placement and during your life, whenever you practice your medicine, the medical ethics is very much important for us. Now, at first, we should tell about ethics. What is ethics? Ethics means voluntarily self-imposed code of conduct. Voluntarily self-imposed code of conduct. Voluntarily, that is upon my wish, upon my wish. No one forced me to do that. That is voluntarily. Self-imposed by me, by myself, not by others. So, the dictionary meaning of ethics is voluntarily self-imposed code of conduct. And the definition of medical ethics, which is the definition of medical ethics? It means moral principles which should guide the members of the medical profession in course of practice their medicine and dealings with their patient and other members of the profession and the estate. That is, there are some part in that definition that is the moral principles. We have to show some character. We have to show some principle. And who are that person? Up to whom we should show that character, that principle. That is to our patients, to our colleagues, even our estate during the practice of medicine. So it means moral principles which should guide the members of the medical profession in course of practice their medicine dealings with their patient, other members of medical profession and the estate. So it is clear to us about the definition. And regarding medical ethics, regarding medical ethics about Geneva Declaration, there is a relation between medical ethics and Geneva Declaration because nowadays the Geneva Declaration is accepted as an international code of medical ethics. So we should know about Geneva Declaration and it is very, 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 very important for us, very, very important for us, I repeat, very, very important for us uh, regarding our examinations and our daily practice. Before starting the course of Geneva Declaration, I would like to say when, where and how the Geneva Declaration was adopted. So, what is Geneva Declaration? Geneva Declaration is a modernized form of Hippocrates. Geneva Declaration is a modernized form of Hippocrates. You know the Hippocrates. Who is Hippocrates? You also know that. So, it was a modernized version of Hippocrates. And it is adopted by the third General Assembly of World Medical Association. Where? In Geneva, Switzerland. When? It is in September 1948. So, the third General Assembly of World Medical Association recognized the Geneva Declaration by adopted the Geneva Declaration where in the Geneva, Switzerland in September 1948. As the General Assembly was conducted in Geneva, so it is named such, that is Geneva Declaration. After that, in October 1948 in London, it was accepted as an international code of medical ethics as an international code of medical ethics. So, what are the codes of Geneva Declaration? In regular interval, regular that is two to three years or four years interval, the Geneva Declaration are updated. But what are the main thing that the codes of Geneva Declaration are like that? There are 11 codes of Geneva Declaration. Number one, 
I solemnly pledge myself to consecrate my life to the service of humanity. That is, I will declare my life for the humanity. So, I solemnly pledge myself to consecrate my life to the service of humanity. That is the first, first one. The second one, I will give to my teachers the respect and gratitude which is their due. I will give to my teachers the respect and gratitude which is their due. Number three, I will practice my profession with conscience and dignity. Number four, the health of my patient will be my first consideration. Number five, I will respect the secrets which are confided in me. Number six, I will maintain by all the means in my power the honor and noble traditions of medical profession. Number seven, I will not permit consideration of religion, nationality, race, party, politics, social standing to intervene between my duty and my patient. Number eight, my colleagues will be my brothers and sisters. Number nine, I will maintain utmost respect for human life from the time of conception. Thereafter, number 10, even under threat, I will not use my medical knowledge contrary to the laws of humanity. And as number 11, that is, I make these promises solemnly, freely and upon my honor. So, if we start again, number 1, I solemnly praise myself to consecrate my life to the service of humanity. That is, there is nothing, there is nothing but the human life. I will consecrate my life. I will give my life for the humanity. Thereafter, I will give to my teachers the respect and gratitude which is their due. Because after taking admission in the medical college, you know, your father and mother, both the role played by the, are playing by your teacher. So you have to give, you have to give your teachers the respect and gratitude. Until otherwise, you will not be a good doctor, you will not be a good human being. So you have to respect your teachers, you have to show the character, you have to give them the gratitude. Number three, I will practice my profession with conscience and dignity. What is the meaning of that? I will practice my profession with conscience and dignity. That is, I have to show some dignity, I have to show some pure character, I have to show the dedication during my profession, during my practice. Number four, the health of my patient will be my first consideration. There is nothing but the health of my patient. When a patient comes to me, I have to show full attention to the patient, not to the others. Like that, when we dealing a patient, I have a, a phone call came to me, but I have to reject that phone call or I have to tell that I am dealing a patient. Please, please make a phone call to me later. So whenever we practice, the health of my patient will be my first consideration. Thereafter, another very, very important thing that is, I will respect the secrets which are confident in me. When a patient come to us, when a patient come to us, he or she told us some history regarding, regarding his disease or heart disease. We have to confident that secret within us. We, we should not disclose that secrets to, the, to others. Number six, I will maintain by all the means in my power. I have to maintain by the power of me that the no honor and noble tradition of medical profession. That is, I should not do, I should not do any such things which decline the name and fame of the medical profession. Number seven, I will not permit consideration of religion, nationality, race, party, politics, social standing to intervene my duty and my patient. That is, being a Muslim doctor, I don't see a, a Hindu patient. Being a Hindu doctor, I don't see a Muslim patient. He is a Negro. I don't like to see him. No, 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 my friends, no, my student. Please, be careful. You, when you become a doctor, everything should be under control. You have to show your character that you are a doctor. So, there is no, you should not intervene your race, your religion. Then, you are a doctor and you have to, you have to show the, your responsibilities to the human being, not to the Negro, not to an white man. You are a, you are a doctor and you, you should show the character to the human being, whatever he is or she is. My colleagues will be my brothers and sisters. You should not be jealous. You should not be jealous about your colleagues. They are your brothers and sisters. I will maintain utmost respect for human life from the time of conception. You have to give concentration for the human life, even, even he or she is within the uterus. So, even under threat, 
I will not use my medical knowledge to contrary to the laws of humanity. Never. You should not use your knowledge contrary to the law of humanity. You should not use your knowledge to issuing a formal certificate. You should not use your knowledge to issue a wrong medical report to earn something. You should not write a postmortem report, a postmortem report which is unethical. So you have to make these promises solemnly, freely, and upon your honor. This is all about Geneva Declaration. Another term is medical etiquette. Medical etiquette that is regarding colleagues. In the point number eight of Geneva Declaration, we told that my colleagues will be my brothers and sisters. And regarding that, another word that is medical etiquette. And it is very important, very, very important. The definition itself is it deals with conventional laws of courtesy observed between the members of medical profession. That is not only doctors, but also brothers, sisters, and all the members of medical profession. Examples like that, a doctor should behave with his colleagues in such a way that he would like to have from them that which behavior you want from, a, from your colleague. You should behave with him such a way. A doctor should not criticize about the professional ability of another doctor in front of the patient, but we are used to do that. A doctor should not entice away, entice away a patient uh, from his colleagues. So, the three things uh, within that medical etiquette. So, what is medical etiquette? Conventional laws of courtesy observed between the members of medical profession. So, we should not criticize regarding our colleagues in front of the patient. We should not entice away a patient from our colleague and we should show the behavior to him what we want from him so it is medical etiquette it is very very important so that is all about from the medical ethics and it is very very important for our daily life our practicing life and as well as for our examination both for mcq saq and the oral and practical examination Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa